So we are going to go over today why HCG prevents starvation during this extremely very low calorie diet. We're, we're talking about eating less than 500 calories, which is less than what a child would need to eat in a day. So if you, if you think about the, the obvious results from eating such a small amount of food, you know, most people would say that you're going to be hungry. Have you ever tried 1,200 calories? Because most people feel famished when they get to that low of calories. Mm -hmm. um, hunger, uh, loss of, of energy. You know, if you've got a job and you need to be, you know, available and have meaningful conversation and sometimes um, heated conversation, you need to have your energy and you need to have your head together. So how is that going to be maintained during this process? And, the, you know, if you wanted to be able to go out and go for a walk and have activity, how could anybody do that with such a small amount of fuel? Um, and ultimately, eating such a small amount, if you go into starvation, you're going to lose a significant amount of muscle. So yeah, absolutely, you're going to lose fat. There's no doubt about it. Anybody who eats less than 500 calories is going to lose a significant amount of fat. However, how does the body during this process prevent the lean muscle loss or, or uh, protein loss um, and keep fat metabolism elevated? Okay, most people just make the assumption that based on calories that 500 would never be sustainable no matter what you do. But that thought process is a sign that they don't understand hormones and nor do they understand the hormone HCG and how it influences a pregnant woman. Um, pregnant women in, in America on average gain 15% body fat. That's a significant amount of fat. You, if you really look at the average size of a, of a woman, we're talking between 30 and 50 pounds of excess fat during that period of time, which is, hum which is, is very fast, it's very um, quite incredible. And most American women absolutely eat too much. There's no doubt about it. Um, but that type of fat gain doesn't, you'd have to be binging every single day. It's an, it's an incredible amount of fat gain. So what would make a pregnant woman very susceptible to fat gain? Well, we now know that the hormone HCG is directly linked to the fueling mechanisms of the body in a pregnant woman that makes her highly susceptible to fat gain. And in other words, that makes her body need less food. So that, for example, if you were eating 1,500 calories before you were pregnant, or 2,000, and you ate 2,000 calories while you were pregnant, you're going to gain. Whereas before, you didn't gain. In fact, you could eat anything you wanted. But during pregnancy, you're going to gain eating the same exact thing. And it's because HCG stimulates, in particular, the hormone leptin, so that your body does not need as much food. So, and if you add to the fact that American women, in general, Eat, eat even more because we're pregnant, it's not surprising that we gain so much fat in such a short period of time. The other way um, that we understand this hormonally is for menopausal women or during your menstrual cycle. You'll notice um, at different times in the menstrual cycle that you're hungrier and then you're not as hungry. You feel like you're gaining fat and then you feel like you're leaner at different times during your cycle. Menopausal women they, you know, in their 30s and early 40s could eat, let's just use 2,000 calories. <clears throat> they all of a sudden, overnight, eating the same amount, gain an astronomical amount of fat. And it has a lot to do with these hormones. So we're going to go over those hormones today. Specifically, the hormone leptin. Leptin was discovered in 1994, okay? This hormone is, is, is important in particular because it comes from your fat. Have you ever heard of this? No. Well, this hormone is one of many. Reading about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Before absolutely. That, it never. This hormone is one of many that your fat creates and puts into the body. And hormones don't just, they have, there's a purpose to them. They have a function. And this hormone has many functions. The first thing they discovered is that when leptin levels are elevated in the brain, here. Here's your brain, right? There's your face. Here's your brain. <laughs> there we go. When leptin levels are elevated inside the brain, there's enzymes here that when they're active, they, uh, they make you feel the sense of urgency to eat. When you're not, it's not emotional hunger, it's not desire, it's not, you know, ooh, that smells good, I want to bite. It's true urgency to eat. You know when you get really hungry and you're like, get out of my way? 
-hmm. That's coming from your brain because those enzymes up there, agouti, neuropeptide Y, ghrelin, they're active. When leptin levels are down, they become active. When leptin levels go up, they turn off. So leptin regulates your hunger. Mm -hmm. And that's coming from your fat. So when you think about, to, if you were to compare two people, you've got the thin person here, and you've got a, a morbidly obese person here, okay? Obviously, this person has less fat than this person, right? Mm -hmm. Now remember, each cell, that's a cell of fat, is, creates leptin. Who has more fat here? This person, right? Mm -hmm. So who is getting more leptin? Well, the fat person. You got it. Significantly higher. I mean, the, what the terms they use in science is exponentially higher. Mm -hmm. They get much more leptin. So, based on what I just told you about leptin in the brain decreases hunger, who's hungrier? Who's hungry more often? The fat person. Nope. Oh, the less skinny person. You got it. Well, they're eating probably more regularly. They, they're, it's because of this. Mm -hmm. They have less, this person has a significant less leptin production because they don't have as many cells to create it. Mm -hmm. This person has a lot more cells to create it. And so this person has exponentially higher levels of leptin. And they're actually not very hungry at all. But in America, do we eat because we're hungry? No. You got it. We so just eat. we falsely <laughs> assume that, oh, well, this person must be hungrier because in order to get that fat, they're going to have to eat a ton of food. If you talk to anybody who really, who really has obesity, they're not hungry when they wake up in the morning. They just don't have much of an appetite. But the big difference is they're, when they do finally get hungry, it's pretty severe. This person, That's how I am. I hate breakfast. I don't eat in the morning. Well, yeah. You've got extra fat. By dinner, I am ready to shoot somebody. Yeah. And it may be just lack of planning or, you know, the timing of when yeah. you eat needs to improve. Well, this person here wakes up, they're hungry. And they're hungry two hours later. That's my son. And then they're hungry they're hungry again. And then when they do eat, it takes more food. Food stimulates this hormone. So food is a very important uh, hormonal stimulant. That's another people don't understand is food is a hormonal stimulant. So all food stimulates your fat to produce and put in the body leptin, which when elevated inside the brain, turns off hunger. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when you look at how much food someone needs, in order to, so let's say these two people are equally hungry, right, which tells you their leptin levels are down, so then their body says go get food, food stimulates leptin. Who needs more food to get adequate leptin levels to turn off hunger? The fatter person. Well, they've got all of those cells that are going to get stimulated. So if they eat more food, are they going to get even more leptin? Do they need more leptin? They don't need it. So do they need to eat as very as much? much? No. They don't. So their need for food is dramatically reduced. Whereas this person here, because they don't have a lot of output of leptin from their fat, they don't have enough fat to create enough, they're probably going to need more food. Which is why they go and they're eating three to four pieces of pizza. Mm -hmm. And the fat person has one. And they're going, and they're blowing up. Let's talk about that because we, we for a long time have falsely assumed that what's in food is what's making you fat. Oh no, it's this. Leptin is an amazing hormone that is, um, does more than just hunger. This is just one slice of the pie. So let's get into what leptin does that makes someone more susceptible to fat gain. Okay? Because you want this hormone, right? Because it alleviates some stuff in the brain, but you don't want too much. Okay. okay. So let's come over here. So here's a fat cell. Okay. Every cell in the body, except for your red blood cells in your brain, has this little organelle. It's called a mitochondria. It basically, this is what I call your, um, your body's gas pump. This is where fuel is created and put into the body. Fuel is, um, so it has to be in a cellular form mm -hmm. and it has to be what we call a substrate sitting in the cell and in order for your body to create fuel, let's say this is fat, these are called fatty acids, in order for this cell to provide fuel to the body, mm -hmm. 
this little thing has got to get inside that mitochondria where it's going to get chewed up and spit out in what, what we call human ATP or human gasoline, adenosine triphosphate, or like I said, human gasoline. Okay? Leptin is what regulates the rate that your fatty acids can get into that mitochondria. So leptin is an amazing hormone because it, when elevated, the more leptin you get, the more fuel or gasoline that comes out of that pump. Mm. So the more leptin you have, the more fuel you get from your fat in particular. Now how could that be a bad thing? You're probably thinking, really? Because if this person has more leptin, they're burning more fat. Right. Well, guess what? That is the truth. The problem is, this form ATP, if you don't use it, that's not a good thing. So you could be burning your fat into fuel, but you gotta go combust it. You gotta use it. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're in trouble. There's problems that occur when you have too much of this. What happens is it goes through a recycling process. ATP gets converted into um, a nuco through nuco gluconeogenesis, glucose, and then it gets converted into triglycerides, which then gets mm -hmm. com goes to the liver and gets recreated into a fatty acid. So it goes through recycling. So if this person has more leptin, they may at one point have more than they need, which surpasses their need for fuel. Does that make sense? It does. So when we were talk when you talk about calories in, calories out, we have been so naive to assume that the food you're eating is what's giving you fuel. Food is nowhere close to fuel. It's got to go through a very large digestive process before it can be stored in this form. Mm -hmm. However, food stimulates this hormone which releases fuel from your fat while your food is being digested. However, the more fat you have, with each stimulus, you're getting even more fuel. So you, you hope to God you need that fuel, right? Mm -hmm. So this person, if they eat the same as this person, okay, so let's say these two people are equally hungry, and they both eat an apple, the same exact size, same exact apple, okay? which is going to be really stimulating their fat to release leptin, right? Mm -hmm. So we already know this person's going to get more leptin than this person, right? Because each of those cells got stimulated to release that hormone, correct? Yes. This person doesn't have as many cells. So then the result of all that leptin is a release of fuel. So who gets more fuel from that apple? The fat person. You got it. Why are we counting this fuel when this is what fuel we right, get? Yeah. So this person gets all that leptin. They get all of that fuel, and they gain fat eating the same thing that this person did. But this person, after eating one apple, is still hungry, so they end up eating three times as much. And they're still not gaining fat. This person eats one, gets a big ass. Nice to be that person. Okay, well, the more fat you gain, <laughs> the more fat you gain, the more the less food you need this is why so that's why so once you gain those fat cells and you gain that um, the larger fat cells which this person we know has much bigger fat cells bigger fat cells release more leptin your need for food dramatically decreases because of this hyper magnification of the response so ultimately when you think about it this person's kind of bionic they don't need as much food to survive so if you had to um, live off of rations, let's say we had some major cataclysm and you had to live off of rationing your food, who would live longer on rationing their food? You know, who needs less, who has less hunger, who needs less food? The fat person has less hunger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if they were rationing, trying to keep their food supply stocked, this person's going to live longer because they have less hunger and less need for that food. This one, on the other hand, won't survive as long. So you're bionic right now. Um, yeah, you have, you chubby. have you look at all those skinny chubby, people right? out there, and you need to be thinking. Oh, I am no, survive. I want to get back to being skinny. I agree, but this is you see how that works. Yeah. Okay. Um, so starvation, on the other hand, so more leptin is not better, but we want enough because we want your fat to supply the fuel to your body, but we don't want too much of this hormone. Okay. So if you're not hungry and you eat anyway, so let's talk about lack of hunger. If you're not hungry, what does that tell us about your leptin levels? That they're high. They're elevated. So what would happen if you go to a party 
and they're serving all this food, you're not hungry, and you justify eating anyways because you're celebrating. What's going to happen to your overall leptin levels? Are they going to go up? Oh yeah. Significantly. And the more fat you are, the worse it is. Okay? And then you're going to gain fat. So really, if you're not hungry, whatever justification or rationalization you have, if there's no hunger, you're going to cause a hormonal problem mm -hmm. if you eat because food stimulates the hormone that regulates hunger. Mm -hmm. Okay? So on the other side, leptin is a vital uh, hormone because it's, we want this to be released. We want fuel to be released from your fat. However, if you don't have enough, you're going to experience more hunger. Okay? Hunger is a sign that you're going to be going through starvation. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this. Do you feel like you got this? I do. Okay. Thank you. So starvation. This is, this is modern science. This has all been summarized and proven. So everything I'm going over with you, you can go, go search engine it. It's leptin, starvation. You'll get hundreds of studies. Okay. So we want the adequate amount of leptin. So ultimately, let's say your body needs 10 in fuel. We want fat to provide 10 so that there's no problems. Okay. Well, what happens when your leptin levels decrease below what's ideal? Let's say your leptin levels only provide 8 and the body needs 10. You're starving. You've got a problem. Your body's going to have to find that fuel to live to create balance. And so the first thing the body taps into because it's so easily accessed is blood glucose. Now, blood glucose is vital for your brain. This is your brain's fuel. If you look at how much glucose you have in your body at one time, it's finitely regulated for the brain. The brain has a blood-brain barrier, which limits what can get into the brain to fuel. Now, your, and your brain cells don't have that mitochondria or fuel pump. Okay. So they can't create their own fuel, which is great news, because if they could, you lose brain trouble. cells. You got it. And so the body's got to have a delivery system, and that is the blood, the, the vascular system, your uh, circulatory system. So. Um, blood glucose is finitely controlled for the brain. However, glucose is highly toxic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it can't have too much or you'll, you'll kill the brain, but if you don't have enough, the brain won't survive without it because it needs it as fuel. Mm -hmm. So if leptin levels are lower and your fat is, is inadequate to supply fuel, your body will first tap into this. And what happens then is you get a decrease in brain glucose. That decrease in brain glucose is what regulates the decrease in brain leptin. Did you know that? If you get a decrease in brain leptin, guess what you get? You get hunger. Okay? Oh, it's starving. I'm always like, I'm starving. <laughs> so you get a decrease in hunger. But what's incredible about brain leptin is it also regulates your thyroid. Your thyroid is like the light bulb to the body. It mm -hmm. is giving you energy. It yeah. makes you feel like you're awake. I know you're all about that. All my beautiful. family has thyroid stuff and I don't. My you are? My grandmother, my aunts. They have awesome thyroid stuff. So. Well, so what's amazing about this thyroid response, leptin, brain leptin or hypothalamic leptin controls the signal of the thyroid. If leptin levels are low, then it turns down the thyroid. So it's all of that signal to the thyroid. And ultimately, by reducing the thyroid, you're decreasing the metabolic signal. And what's great about that is that this metabolic signal is what, what can directly influence how much fuel the body needs. Remember, that's the body. This is how much you're getting from fat because leptin is low. And so if there's inadequacy here, this eventually will help out by decreasing this demand to match what leptin is providing. It's like a stair-step starvation process. That is an incredible science. Um, so not only are you hungry, but once you tap into blood glucose, let's say you get hungry and you don't eat. Right? Because you're on some diet and you're desperate to lose fat to fit into a dress for a wedding, whatever the reason, right? If you don't listen to this, not only will that happen, but eventually your body can't take this glucose anymore because it'll kill itself. It'll kill the brain. So it taps into body protein, which is your muscle. So then what happens to recoup if this continues to be, you know, less than your body will say, hey, we're gonna go ahead instead of taking blood glucose because that'll kill the brain. We're going to start taking body protein. So, all of this is caused from insufficient levels of leptin. So what they've discovered is that you can keep your leptin levels elevated, then none of this will happen. Okay? 
So they took these mice and said, hey, let's give an alternative form of leptin. Let's take all their food away because if their leptin levels stay elevated, then their need for food hormonally won't be as necessary. See how that works? It did. Fabulous. So they did that, and guess what? The mice lost 100% fat, had absolutely very limited hunger, did not eat what they were given, and um, their energy levels were up. They spent more time in their little run wheels, and it was a miracle. These mice, obese mice, lost significant amount of weight and had no symptoms of starvation, eating next to nothing. Great. So what do you think HCG is going to do? It's going to elevate my levels of leptin so I don't need as much food. Correct. But what does that put you at risk for? <laughs> for being, well, hungry. Mm -mm. Losing weight? It, what, by giving you HCG, which in the it's low dose elevate amount. my leptin. And what does that do to your need for food? It makes you not want food as much. Your need for, no, 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 I'm going to rephrase that because you're, you're going to want food. Trust me, you live in America and we have all sorts of dysfunctional desire. Sure. You're not going to have as much hunger, that's, that's for sure. You can get hungry, don't get me wrong on that, but it's going to be less often, it'll take less food. But if you eat anyhow, that bite is going to make it go crazy. You're going to gain. That's why they say if you go off this thing, you will, gain, you will not lose your pound and you'll mess it up. So at least I know one thing I can say is I'm slightly disciplined. So if you know, I can, I believe if you gave me foods, I cook. So if you give me a list of foods and say this is how you're supposed to yeah. cook them, I'm not a fast food eater. I don't eat out, like, I mean, I eat at restaurants, but I'm not a snacker. Yeah. So, you know, if I have been able to, um, I've maintained weight easily. I yeah. just, I'm having gained, gained since, you know, my husband passed away. I've maintained it. I just yeah. don't want to maintain yeah. this size it's not healthy. Low dose HCG is a very, very powerful stimulant of leptin. More powerful than food. Okay. That's why it's such a small amount almost, almost completely will remove your need for food. The most important part of this conversation though is hunger because that's your only conscious signal to know where it's at. Mm -hmm. and, and so understanding what hunger feels like and using that as your guide is is vital for this to work for you. Yeah. Keep in mind, this is not a diet. No, I we're, we're giving you a hormone that is going to increase your risk for thyroid issues. It's going to increase your risk for hormonal issues from the ovaries. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh. I don't want more kids. So we're well, ovaries. but keep, keep in mind, <laughs> polycystic ovarian syndrome, there are ramifications. This, sure. the diets don't do that. Mm -hmm. And so the importance of your understanding this so that you know what you're signing up for here. Mm -hmm. If you cheat, if it's a bite, you'll justify it however you want. I won't you're justify gonna have it. That's why I flashes. came here today, because I know tomorrow I'm gonna go crazy, and the next day I'm gonna go crazy. Good. So we're gonna finish this with a discussion of the hunger scale. Okay. Because that's going to help us guide you when to eat and how much. Okay. So I have a, use a scale of hunger on a scale of one to five and fullness on a scale of six to 10. So basically we're taking a, a scale of one to 10, splitting it in the middle. This side is hunger and this side is fullness. Okay, one, the first thing they discovered about leptin with this hunger thing is the more that you have, you don't, you don't get fullness. Hunger just goes away. Fullness is a, is a side effect caused from gluttony. I don't like to be full. Me neither. I don't even like that feeling. I don't eat to be, to yeah. be full. So you may just be a picker, just tasting, especially because you like to cook. I'm cooking. That's yeah. my problem. Okay. And wine. And wine. Well, it's very, the protocol's short, you know, so that is definitely not on the very low calorie protocol, which we'll get into in a second. Oh, I don't care. I can give up wine. That's so nice. hunger's on a scale of five to one. So five is nothing. If you, there is no hunger whatsoever, you're at a five. Now you can still have desire to eat. This is the difference between those mice in the study and human beings, that human beings eat without hunger all the time because we are very intelligent and we can justify and rationalize. Mice don't do that. So I'm not, we've got to try to get you to act like a mouse. Mm -hmm. If you are not hungry, that five, your leptin is ideal. I like to put this on a, an upside down U curve or a bell curve. This is quantity of leptin and this is fueling needs. Obviously, if your fueling need is here, we want to make sure you have that much leptin, right? So that it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, on this hunger scale, if you're not hungry, you're right here. You're right where you need to be. 
okay? So five is nothing. Four on this scale, you're starting to get hungry. There's some, you can feel there's a sense of urgency or, you know, um, however, you, you're, you can wait. It's not urgent yet. Four is not urgent, but you're getting a little bit of a warning, okay? So your leptin levels are starting to, to go down. Number three on this scale is urgent. So it, once you hit, and what you'll notice is that the time it takes to go from a five to a four is probably quite some time. But once you hit that four, the amount of time it takes to get to a three may be pretty dang quick. Mm -hmm. You know, the thinner you are, this may take 20, 30 minutes, but the more body fat and weight that you have, the time it takes to go from a four to a three could be five minutes. So you need to be aware of when this occurs. So if we look at this graph here, Works, this hunger is on this side, not enough. It's, in a, it's inadequate amounts of, of leptin to release fuel to be substantial. On this side of the curve, from three down, we're dealing with starvation. You could absolutely go through starvation on this protocol if you don't listen to this hunger, okay? Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure you never hit that three. It's that urgency, you kind of get irrational because your, your need for food is starting to really magnify from the brain, okay? okay? So the ideal starting time to eat is a 3.5. So on this, this point right here is mm -hmm. 3.5. Okay. Once you start eating, you're gonna get that positive reinforcement from the brain, you're going to, um, the palate is gonna be stimulated, and you're gonna enjoy, obviously, what you're gonna be eating. What's very important here is that you stop once hunger goes away, and at that point, you're still going to have desire. You're still going to want to eat because it tastes good, but you've got to be able to differentiate desire from real hunger. So we want to make sure that you get to a five and a little beyond. So we want to make sure that you are confident that your hunger is gone. So 5.5 is the ideal start stopping point, okay? Right here. Yes. So this right here, this zone, the 3.5 to 5.5, is the ideal point of leptin. Okay. Now here's the difference from the protocol, the very low calorie protocol, to the maintenance phase, or from today. Your need, your fueling need for, from fat is still gonna be pretty much, pretty close to the same it is gonna be during the very low calorie okay. protocol. Make sense? Yeah. So that's not gonna change and neither is this. The difference here is right now, for the most part, you're getting a stimulus from food to get there. Most of this leptin is coming from a food stimulus. Okay. Well, once you take that HCG, you're going to be getting most of that leptin from here, from HCG. Okay. So your need for food may be just a little bit. So once we're done with this first phase, the very low calorie protocol phase, and we take this HCG away, how are you gonna know how much to eat? Once this goes away, you better know what this feels like so that you, do so that know. you know that makes sense. how much food it's gonna take. And keep in mind that during, you're a woman, you have ovaries and you ovulate. Different times during your menstrual cycle, you'll notice that because of how the ovaries stimulate leptin, okay, luteinizing hormone and bulk, that different times during your menstrual cycle that you need maybe less food and other times you need more food. It, well, this, this won't be in conflict with birth control, will it? No, okay. not at all. But you're still going to notice these cycles. So you've got to be dynamic and willing to move and adjust your, your, your protocol based on that signal of hunger. Okay. Can you see how this right here is your ticket out? I do. You better know this hunger when this is over. Okay. And so, yeah, so our strategy for I'm you... I'm reading this. I don't get to this. Good. I'm that's not great that news. crazy. I, I can't be. I, that, I'm, that's why I don't eat certain things at lunch or at work because I don't want to be tired and lethargic and yeah. yucky. So, I think I'm I'm all right. That's I wouldn't do this if I didn't think that it was um, something that emotionally I could do and that you know in terms of my schedule that I could to, could do. So I did have taken some time Good. before I called you to to look at all those things. Do you have any questions so far no. about? So no. it's very obvious. It's very point. clear. Yeah. All right, so yeah. that's good for, for this. That's okay.